And I said, doctor, you don't know me, but let me tell you this. If you unplug the life support for my client, your life as you know it ends today. Tim Misney is tough. If you're an opposing counsel and you're sitting across from him in a courtroom, then you know you're in for a battle. And this guy, Tim Misney, he's not taking any prisoners, but Misney's more than a passionate advocate for his clients. Misney is arguably a social media star. He's built a personal brand that rivals some of the biggest. Over the many years, countless clients have told me that because a healthcare provider just wouldn't listen to them, they suffered unnecessarily. Believe me when I tell you, I'll listen, and then I'll make them pay. His trademark slogan, I'll make them pay, has made him a household name. His wife Stephanie says when they go to the grocery store together, it takes too much time because people stop him in the aisle and they ask for his autograph. She says some people even ask to have their picture taken with him. One of his fans wrote a rap song about him. The Missy is a boss with a house in the hills. Put money in the bank and he's paying the bills. When he waits, he makes a pie. Tim Misney sat down with Pittsburgh Scott and me at a place he calls Misneyland. It's an 80 acre estate that he owns. It's in a suburb called Wade Hill. It's just outside of Cleveland. During the meeting, he told us what it takes to be successful in business. He shared how to overcome the competition and he revealed what motivates him. Passion, as you know, makes all the difference. I don't care if you're a chef, mm -hmm. if you drive a bus, Whatever you do in life, if you have passion for it, that transcends. It takes it to a whole new level. Let me tell you what excites me, what, what gets me out of the bed in the morning, why I have a tough time sleeping at night because I'm so excited about the next day, yeah. what, what I need to do. But for my help, oftentimes people have no chance at justice. They come to me as a last resort, okay? Do you really think a young couple whose child is a, a victim of a birth injury has the resources to go up against the Cleveland Clinic or University Hospitals? Absolutely not. So I take that responsibility uh, to heart. Mm -hmm. And I represent every child in a birth injury case as if I'm representing my, one of my own children. So you take it personally, obviously. I take, I take everything personally. You have to. Mm -hmm. you know? And if you don't and you're numbed and you just go through the motions, you're not doing an effective job as an advocate for your client. And now you were a prosecutor too? Right, back in the day in the early 80s, um, I was a prosecutor. During mm -hmm. law school, I worked full-time in a prosecutor's office as a clerk and went to school at night. And when I came out, I was a, an assistant prosecutor for four years. Being in the prosecutor's office for four years was a great experience in the reality of the practice of people, mm -hmm. their mindset, and what to look for, what to trust, what not to trust. Yeah. Yeah. And when I came into the prosecutor's office, Lou, when I walked in the first day, I believed everybody. My last day when I walked out, I believed nobody. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Cleveland Police Patrolmen's Association stole me away, and I represented police officers for four years. When I like to say there was a misunderstanding, yeah. and yeah. that was the genesis for uh, doing personal injury work, because mm -hmm. oftentimes police officers in the line of duty get hurt, mm -hmm. and I started representing uh, cops in injury cases, and I got a reputation. Then it kind of snowballed. So that's how you made the transition from. Right. Representing police officers, cops, to your own your right. own business. Right. And how exactly. long ago was that? Well, I, I was a prosecutor in the early 80s, mm -hmm. and I, so I started, uh, it's been 38 years. And you went from right. representing police officers and injuries, right. and then you built your own business. How, right. When did it take off? Well, my, my motto is early to bed, early to rise, work like hell, and advertise. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And Good. i got to remember that motto. And i got to tell you, the reason why I believe our marketing campaign is so successful is because it is authentic. Mm -hmm. It's authentic. I'll give an example. I have a new commercial wherein I say, over the many years, countless clients have told me that because a healthcare provider just wouldn't listen to them, they suffered unnecessarily. Believe me when I tell you, I'll listen and I'll make them pay. Yeah. The inspiration of that was a week before I filmed that last week, a young lady called me up and said she was 15 weeks pregnant. She had a uh, severe pains. She complained. The doctors wouldn't listen to her. And it turned out she had an inflamed uh, appendix and mm -hmm. it burst. And because of that, she lost a baby. Yeah. And that was the inspiration for me to say, sometimes healthcare providers don't listen. And because of that, 
you suffer unnecessarily. What do you tell somebody, though, who is, who is an attorney who's been struggling, who's been working for years, who hasn't reached the heights that you reached, right. the number of employees, the 20 right. offices? What do you tell them? Well, sh shockingly, most lawyers are adverse to advertising. Okay. Is that back in the Lincoln days? Yes, and Grand they Lincoln? are just not set up for it. They don't have the mindset for it. And I am passionate about it because my marketing, the threshold consideration of my marketing is to inspire people and inform them of their rights. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in one of my commercials, when I talk about there's a one-year statute of limitations in medical malpractice cases, people see that. Mm -hmm. And they hear that and they think, Okay, they may not call me, they may call another lawyer, but it's informing them of their rights. And I'm very passionate about that. Some lawyers take a different approach. They like to sit back and hopefully things come their way. I go out and I like to uh, create situations. I went to Marshall Law School and many of the guys that I went to law school with are representing insurance companies, mm -hmm. okay? And I tell them, the difference between me and you is that I am an outdoor cat and you're an indoor cat. I said, what do you mean by that? I said, every day somebody puts a little platter of milk on a leather sofa in front of a fireplace and you lay there and you lap it up. Mm -hmm. I'm outside in the cold rain and I'm standing for four hours over a little hole waiting for a chipmunk to pop its head up because I eat what I kill. Mm -hmm. If I don't kill it, I don't eat that day. Mm -hmm. And it's that mindset of being passionate about what you do. I never go through the motions of a day. Oftentimes with some lawyers, defense lawyers, it doesn't make a difference. They're getting paid the same amount. Their day is the same and they just become robotic, if you will. Yeah. Whereas with our cases, each case is a unique fact pattern. Each case excites us. Each case is an opportunity for us to express our unbridled passion for representing that person. Mm -hmm. It is a completely different mindset. I like to say we wear the white hats and they have the dark hats. And it really is true because representing a client is a whole different dynamic than representing an insurance company. I have to ask you this question, your rap commercial. Missy is a boss with a house in the hills. Put money in the bank and he's paying the bills. When he waits, he Let me tell you, I, uh, I got a phone call from a guy who said uh, he is a, uh, a producer and he said his these rap artists mm -hmm. did a song about Tim Misney. And uh, I said, listen, man, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm a Sinatra guy, okay? Yeah. And I, I don't think I, I could, you know, he they, they said, we'd like you to be in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, the rap song. I said, I, I don't think so. He said, well, just meet these guys, will you? So, okay. So I met him, and the guy takes his shirt off, and across his back, he has tattooed, make them pay. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I'm in. Hey, Tim, what you going to do? I'm going to make them pay. You go to that link. You couldn't turn that down. I can't turn that down. No, so I, no. I was in the video, and that was a lot of fun. Um, the whole make and pay thing. Over the many years, countless clients have told me that because a health care provider just wouldn't listen to them, they suffered unnecessarily. Believe me when I tell you, I'll listen, and then I'll make them pay. The genesis of that was years ago, I got a call from a family whose uh, child went in for a very simple procedure and the doctor fumbled the ball and the, the young man suffered a severe permanent brain injury. I went to the hospital to meet the family and it was tragic. The young man uh, at the time was my son's age. He was laying in bed on life support system mm -hmm. and same age as my son at the time. And the spooky thing about it, Lou, was he was wearing the same Spider-Man t-shirt that my son wears, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Well, I said I would help the family. I leave, I'm walking down the hallway, and the grandmother follows me down. And she said, I want to tell you something. And I turn around, and she took her finger, and she put it in my chest, and with all the energy and strength her 96-pound body could muster, she said, now you go make them pay. <laughs> And I pledged to her that moment, that night, in that hospital, yeah. that I would. And I did. Yeah. And I realized that bond, that responsibility, that fiduciary relationship is so critical. And I take great pride in being a warrior for my people. Every one of my clients, believe it or not, gets my direct dial cell phone number. you believe that? That's really? amazing. I'm and surprised by now, that. Now, some lawyers give their client their cell phone number, but guess what they do on a Friday? They turn the phone off, yeah. they put it in the top drawer, 
they close it, and they leave. I pledge to each and every client that if you call me that day, I guarantee you, I will call you back the same day. Yeah. Guaranteed. And I'll tell you why. I had a situation a few years ago. Uh, a woman went in for, again, a simple procedure, and the medical staff fumbled the ball, and she was on life support. Mm -hmm. Okay, It was late on a Sunday night. Her father is in her room. Doctors come in to take her off life support. Father calls me up. Tim, Tim, these doctors are in the room. They're going to they're going to they unplug her. They're going to unplug her. And I said, "Please hand the phone to the doctor." And I said, "Doctor, you don't know me, but let me tell you this. If you unplug the life support for my client, your life as you know it ends today." They didn't unplug they turned around, walked out, and would you believe she made a miraculous recovery? Oh she is God. now wow. speaking and talking. Wow. If I didn't answer my phone that night, I, I shudder to think what, what would have happened. So it's critical for me. I can't go to bed at night, Lou, mm -hmm. thinking this person needs me. And oftentimes, in a 17-second conversation, I could put them at ease. And that's what I do. So it, you, you may find that tough to believe, but that goes to our commitment to our clients to communicate with our clients, and nobody does that better than we do.